And now we're back. Maraming maraming salamat po for tuning in. Welcome back to our uh, Alpha TV. No? So good evening po Sir Lex. Ayan. Bulat ako Good po sa ating ako. viewers. Ayan. Kala ko may nag-away ng kapitbahay. Good evening sa... Ayan. Good evening team uh, YouTube. 173. Yes, no? Uh, at uh, good evening sa bago kong ilaw. Dumating ang aking ring light na order. Wow! Na nagbabago-bago ng kulay kagaya ng sayo. Okay. Uh, Oh, ang galing. Oh, <laughs> Mga streamers na yung datingan talaga, no, sir? <laughs> so, sir, okay, so, ano pong meron sa ating ngayong gabi? Ito, nag-adjust tayo ng araw, no? Because of, uh, you know, we have to be flexible, di ba? And uh, for tonight kasi we have another episode of Alpha TV. Ayan, yung mga, yung mga salubong ay nasa ng e-cert. Nag-release po tayo ng e-cert, ha? Tatlong batch po yun ng e-shirt mm. natin. So I hope tama uh, yung address. Ha? Hindi po physical address yun. Address Guys, hindi po kami nag-door-to-door ng e-certificate. No? Uh, oh. <laughs> hindi namin kaya i-afford yung door-to-door eh. Medyo mahal eh. 200 din kay LBC. Ayaw naman natin na ano, uh, itcha-itcha. Diba? Mahirap mm. na. So, dun tayo sa e-shirt na lang muna. But anyway, okay, just uh, setting up the mood. Magandang gabi ulit, no? Magandang gabi sa ating lahat na patuloy pa rin na sumusumaybay sa ating from ECQ to yung iba nag-MGCQ uh, na, no? Oo nga, no? Thank you. Thank you for tuning in sa Alpha TV. And uh, I think we've done a couple, maybe a dozen, more than a dozen or twice, na? Two, two dozens of episodes. Yes, so, no? So, ang dami ng episode, no? Actually, uh, simula last year. No? Last year. Uh, oh, the Alpha TV. Uh, Abangan nyo, kaya. the Alpha Talk. Ayan. Mm, From alpha the TikToks. Talk. <laughs> uh, may katoks. Anyway, so um, tonight naman, um, meron na din tayong bagong ano. I think this is um, somehow a similar topic from what we had like two mm. or three weeks ago. But this one focuses more on the introduction ng naunang topic. Parang ano, medyo pa, parang prequel, kumbaga. So for tonight, okay, Uh, we will be having getting to know RPA o yun yung tawag nating robotic mm. process automation. And uh, tonight also we will be joined by uh, one of the one of yung kakilala ko or connection ko sa LinkedIn na sa tingin ko kaya ito yung nakuha natin kasi sa tingin ko is is very credible to talk about this, no? Uh, we we've, we've uh, known each other through LinkedIn lang din kagaya ng mga most of the Uh, individuals who share their experience and expertise dito sa platform natin. So our speaker is a graduate of UP Diliman and has finished his MBA in 2015. He joined PwC Philippines in June 2016 as a project manager focusing on process improvement and process automation. Uh, and he earned yung kanyang Java programming certificate in 2018 and became a solution architect and RPA lead afterwards. So, ang ating speaker for tonight is none other than J. Armand Ogayon, MBA and a certified Six Sigma Greenbelt and Project Management Professional. Uh, J, andyan ka ba? So, hi, Felix. Good evening. Ayan, good, evening good evening to everyone who's tuning in. Ayan. So, J, kamusta naman? Okay naman. Well, okay naman. Yeah, yeah. Um laging laging driven, uh, still studying kasi if if you are in a tech uh, space, mm-hmm. one thing na common sa mga technicians is that you always have to keep up with the modern technologies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a gift or a curse, but <laughs> same 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 with Six Sigma mm-hmm. uh It's a journey. It's a lifelong mm-hmm. journey if you are mm-hmm. in the tech uh, mm-hmm. space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yun, siguro kung, kung, kung na, na read between the lines nyo, so si Jay here is actually a certified green belt and then uh, nung nagkakakintuhan kami, maganda yung flow ng discussion namin kasi he's been sharing paano ba nang nagagamit tong RPA when when you do process improvement projects. And mm-hmm. I think, <clears throat> sorry, Um, moving forward dun sa discussions, makikita nyo rin paano yun. And uh, I don't know if matatouch. Kung hindi man, we can maybe touch a bit of it during the Q&A. So I don't want to stall your presentation, Jay. So I'll be 
out will be here mm -hmm. sa back screen so you can start presenting okay see you later okay. jay yeah see you later so shepherd before we start i have to introduce myself my name is jay um like 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 Mr. Nabi ni Felix Kanina, I'm the RPA lead of, of PwC Philippines. PwC Philippines is one of the big four accounting firms here in the Philippines. Currently we, we have more than two thousand population in in the firm and we are present in one hundred and sixty countries worldwide. So personal story, uh Hindi Paho um programmer by nature. I don't have a four-year um, programming background or a, 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 a programming um, certificate. I'm not an IT graduate. Um, I just started, you know, um, trying to explore technology somewhere in 2017, which made me become the RPA lead or the robotic process automation lead for PwC Philippines. So, um, short caveat lang, you don't have to be a programmer, you don't have to be a graduate of an IT course in order for you to appreciate or to apply robotic process automation. And at the same time, you don't have to be um, very technical when it comes to coding if you, want to be a, if you want to be a developer in the robotic field. So, that's something that we can look forward to. Actually, Robotic process automation is more on business application, other than um, um, your programming and and all the 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 nerdy stuff ng ng, ng tech space. So um, hopefully that's that's a bit of 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 um, say information and at the same time some sort of uh, motivation on your end on why you have to pursue with robotic process automation. And actually, it's not just about my story, but kung ano yung capacity ni RPA when it comes to driving the, the, the business operations. So there's no better way for me to, um, to define robotic process automation um, more than showing a video. So this video is, is something that um, you can just search and and watch in the internet so it says host disabled participant screen sharing so uh felix hindi ako share but anyway uh since okay na po okay na po okay na so oh there you go um there so if you could see my screen i'll just play a, a one minute video um so, uh, well, obviously, the robots that we know right now are something like this, right? They are mechanical, they are physical, um, they live in a factory or manufacturing space, they, they, they work like, like um, um, on a particular superhuman level in terms of speed, in terms of um, the accuracy, in terms of say, hindi siya nago overtime. So ibig sabihin, uh, one one good thing about robots is that um, they they hindi siya limited doon sa eight hour um, uh, work ng, ng ng isang tao. So as you can see here, uh, they can manipulate or yung robots can 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 manip manipulate two thousand three hundred parts of, of of one car and um, Later in this video, you'll, you'll see that uh, how short or how long can robots create the, the body of a car. So um, if, if, if you've noticed, uh, that particular video showed us the physical robots. And in 68 seconds, that's, that's more than or um, a little bit more than one minute robots can actually finish one body uh, or one car body. So big um, they're fast, they're very accurate, and in terms of quality, nandun siya. In terms of, of, of uh, yung error rate, it's closer to zero or say almost zero. And 
in terms of in terms of quality, champion and it depends on how we are going to program the robot. But the thing is, those robots na nakita natin, we can't bring them in the office, right? So we are or yung mga yung 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 mga nasa field natin uh, most likely sa office tayo mag report or sa office tayo mag report if you are already working. And we can't bring those physical robots in the office. What RPA is doing is we are we are digitizing those physical robots and make them software robots. The service industry will definitely we can't have those robots, but we can always bring in yung software bots, which we call um, robotic process automation. But 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 before we proceed, I want to share this process lifecycle to everyone. Because this is something that 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 all of us can relate to. Majority ng, ng, ng audience natin are IE students or 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 professionals working in a um, in a service um, service oriented business. And we always deal with process improvements. We always deal with processes. We deal with people. We, we, we deal with technology. With all we we deal with 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 all the inputs that we can find in the in the uh, workspace or in our case in the office. So this is the, the this is the process life cycle. It it uh, I'll start with the process design before we come up with or before something materializes. We have to design the process, right? We have to draft policies and procedures. We have to map processes, which is, um, I'm sure, magaling yung 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 um, uh, what do you call this? Si si Ask Lex PH Academy, since since they are focusing and and yung expertise sila is in Six Sigma um, metric development. How do we measure if we are succeeding in our um, processes? Of course, we have to set up um, process controls to ensure that the outputs of the processes are of quality. Next, we, we have process management. We do process metric monitoring. Um, we do uh, some audits, will definitely, and control systems, and of course, yung succession plan natin. What I'm very interested in talking about for, for tonight is process improvement. And I think we all can relate to this. We deal with process improvement almost most of, most of the time. Um, kahit uh, malit na project yad or a huge project. So these are some of the tools or some of the some of the 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 um, say approaches out there when it comes to process improvement. You have Kaizen, you have Lean Six Sigma, definitely um, project management or uh, systems or business analysis, and definitely yung automation. Um, one thing, by the way, I, I I discovered robotic process automation because of Lean Six Sigma. It's because of the the, the curiosity on how I can uh, provide more value to on clients ko, do on sa sa PwC Philippines in general. So I was trying to um, trying to ask myself if I have say tried to apply Lean Six Sigma, how can I improve more? So I tried to Google, I tried to, to talk to professionals, and, and, and then eventually I discovered robotic process automation. And, and, and after that, I started you know, learning um, what really the, 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 the technology can, can, can bring to us. So, so automation is one of the process improvement tools that we have right now. So same with other approaches, robotic process automation is not a silver bullet or it's not like a Swiss knife that can solve well, everything. So in terms of productivity, it's not always, you know, it's not always robotic process automation. It could be say, say artificial intelligence or it could be say kahit si Google na lang or si, si, si G Suite. So you have your, 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 your G Sheets, your Google Docs and so on and so forth or you can just use Lean Six Sigma. So it depends on what kind of problem you are trying to solve. But more importantly, and what's, what's, what's the promise of, of RPA in general is that um, your error rates will be closer to zero, your productivity will be maximized, the efficiency of, of, of people working in a particular process will, will definitely be greater than those of, of the traditional 
techniques um in terms of the work life balance na na we are all very excited about and we are all concerned of kasi of course we have families we have friends and we have life outside work so how are we going to take that or to 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 have that life outside work so the answer could be robotic process automation so this is the process life cycle and i'm just trying to show you where is rpa in terms of process life cycle so yeah let's proceed so um well rpa has been a a, a buzzword for for the past say three to five years it's not it's not um a very old technology rather it's a relatively new technology it's still improving by the day by the way since there's artificial intelligence coming in um here in the philippines the first um companies who applied robotic process automation was way back in 2017 um i started learning about robotic process automation in 2018 so in terms of where the philippines is in in the rpa journey uh sobrang baby pa natin so it's 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 an industry that that lets you have a glimpse on what the future will be like so it's about technology and at the same time processes and it, and, it, and its people and it's the it's the best convergence of what we always hear na people process and technology so for me that's robotic process automation that's the best convergence of these three elements so so going back to the presentation what we have right now is where is robotic process automation um kasi we've been hearing robotic process automation we've been hearing say artificial intelligence we've been hearing machine learning um and and how is robotic um robotic process automation um working on these tools so when we say uh robotic process automation it's not just that tool it has the capacity of machine learning it has the capacity of artificial intelligence and later on we are going to know more about them so so just a macro perspective um robotic process automation is applicable in all industries so whatever industry you are in right now um or kung kung magpapalit man kayo ng industry somewhere in the future robotic process automation um um is something that 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 will change the way you work so in this particular slide you can see that that um the current adoption of of rpa in the manufacturing and production is at 39% so nakita natin kanina most of the developments kasi when it comes to to technology and 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 robots either physical robots and software bots came from the manufacturing industry so they're they're at 39% and in 5 years this will blow up to 63% so um it's a, it's 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 a little less than um 100% improvement but the, but but the thing that we have to to understand uh is is the fact that this is a booming industry this is the future for research and development from 11% to 23%. This is more than 100% improvement. For the IT industry, kahit yung IT natin, we can always create a bot to do the IT work for us. So from 90% to 31%. Customer service uh based on 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 the Philippine industry um uh report uh a total of 800,000 of BPO workers can be impacted by RPA not necessarily matatanggalan sila ng work but 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 basically majority of their work will be taken over by robots so that's in um 5 to 10 years from now so in sales of course from 6% to 20% later on you'll 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 understand paano nangyari na lahat ng industries na ito um is being impacted by this by this particular technology in finance which is my favorite uh PwC is part of a finance company. We do tax, we do accounting, we do auditing, um, we do um, financial consultation. So from 4% up to 8%, there are a lot of manual and repetitive tasks in, in the finance sector. Marketing from 3% to 13%, risk, procurement, and then HR. So if you think that your industry is safe in terms of the impact that RPA will, 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 will bring in... Um, um in several sectors you have to rethink that particular idea because rpa is here to stay and rpa will dominate 
each and every sector that we have right now. So this is a glimpse of the macro situation on where the adoption of robotic process automation is um, and where will it be five years from now. So in this particular slide, you'll see what's, what's the buzz um, on this particular technology. Why is everyone moving to you know, being a traditional company? Why is everyone, based from the presentation that, that we've seen Kanina, why is everyone moving to robotic process automation? What's with robotic process automation? Why is, there, why is everyone getting crazy? Or, 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 or not everyone, but well, well, at least um, the first movers, why are they um, being crazy uh, on what RPA is and what it can do to their business? Because based on PwC, PwC study, 45% um, of work that we are doing right now can be automated. And this particular number increases, um, I would say, by the year. So with the advent of artificial intelligence and RPA, um, it's now at 60%. So perhaps you're, you're, you're asking, um, are we talking about robotic process automation or are we talking about artificial intelligence? The thing is that uh, these two can be fused. Um, well, let's see natin. One particular robot uh, or say one particular person, the robot is the body, Artificial intelligence is the brain. Same with physical and software robots. You have to have something of a physical or, or physical in nature to hold on to something, to grab onto something, to work physically onto something, and another element to think or to command the robot. That is artificial intelligence. So these two, these are partner technologies, RPA and artificial intelligence. So as as RPA and artificial intelligence advances, um, this 45% went up to 60%. So most of the time, when I talk to people uh, and, I and, and I tell them about this particular figure, I always ask them, where do you want to be? Do you want to be in the 60% which can be automated by RPA? Or do you want to remain in the 40% which are still relevant in the future? Basically, when I say relevant, because 60% of the jobs that we have right now will be obsolete. 60% of the job that we have right now will be done by bots. So I hope that's clear. And since we are we are deploying and deploying bots, um, um, it, it's like you're creating your own digital workforce. There's that particular concept, digital workforce, wherein um, uh, your workforce will be just bots. It's like you're, you are creating one army or two armies of robots. So you have your physical workforce and you have your digital workforce. Physical workforce, you have your, 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 your human workers. Digital workforce, you have your robot workers. So what's the impact in terms of business based again on PwC studies? Two trillion in terms of savings from global workforce cost um, can, can, uh, can be realized by deploying robots. So uh, it's not that it's not that bots will will take over our lives and 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 the jobs that we have right now. Uh, it's just that in terms of savings and in terms of productivity and in terms of say more efficiency, robots is better than human beings. But when I say robots will not take over the job, it's because one thing that robots can't do is of course thinking, right? Robots cannot do cognitive. Robots cannot do, say, say um, planning. Robots cannot cannot do, say, uh, strategizing. Robots cannot do, say, analyzing. Robots can cannot decide. They just provide us with all the information that we need in order for us to decide. So later on, we'll talk more about on on those particular things. So in terms of revenue growth, let's go back on the middle. I mean, let's let's go back to the presentation on the middle part. 20% of those who, who, who deployed bots or are implementing RPA um, are experiencing higher revenue. So um, higher revenue growth by 20%. So I have to correct myself on that. So if you are going to, to what, or what this particular um, figure is telling us is that if we deploy bots, the more revenue that, that, that we can get, the better the business in terms of its financial condition. So, sino bang ayaw nun, di ba? Lahat tayo, 
um, regardless of, of, of position in the company, you want better revenues for your business because the more revenue that, that, that your business has, the more opportunity that it can give you, the wider or the more, um, um, say, expansion that, 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 that it can do. More expansion means must start as well when, um, when it comes to your uh, role. You, you, you can be easily promoted. Um, next is um, 30 to 40% improvement in accuracy, cycle time, and productivity. Who doesn't want this? Diba? The thing about human beings is that uh, we're not very accurate. And that's something about being a human person or, or, or a human being. We're not 100% accurate. As long as may tao sa proseso, there will always and always be a room for error. Right? So um, you, you, have to, you have to take note of this one. As long as there's a person working on a particular job, there will always be a room for error. If there is a bot, your error rate can go closer to zero. Cycle times could be faster. Nakita natin kanina. In six to eight seconds, they can they can um, create or they can build the 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 body of the car. And the faster and more accurate um, your 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 bots are or your workforce is or workforce is, the more productive the business can be. So that's why you'll have um, 30 to 40% increase in, in your operational metrics. In customer experience, definitely, this is one, one of the things that, that I really like about robotic process automation is customer experience can increase up to 50%. Why? As a customer, I always demand for a faster transaction. And lahat naman tayo ganun. So one experience that I had is um, a few months back, um, I applied for um, um, a housing loan. Um, but the thing is, it took the bank uh, four to five weeks for them to deliver what I was applying for. And the problem with that is uh, I, I kept on following them up, following up week after week. But the thing is, they can't give me the faster transaction that I want as a customer. And as a customer, not I guilty dito. We are very demanding. We want faster transactions. We have faster turnaround times. Um, we want basically faster outputs or faster results. The thing is, RPA can do that for you. So one 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 particular uh, uh, bank um, uh, deployed a robot in terms of loans application. So. Uh, that particular bank can now uh, process uh, one loan application within 24 hours. So imagine, 24 hours versus a month of waiting time, right? I'd 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 be happier. I'd be um, um, more pleased if I can get my loan within 24 hours, more than the 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 30 days that 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 actually happened, right? So in terms of 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 faster transaction and the efficiency level, bots will be there for you or robots will be there for you. Um, of course, um, since we are talking about productivity, we, we are talking about um, say efficiency and um, the error rates being closer to zero. Cost savings could be up to 30% the moment you, de you, you deploy your bots. So in PwC, we've deployed um, robotic process automation since late 2018. Um, I was actually the first one who, do, who, who, de, who, who developed um, uh, robots. And right now, um, after, uh, after one year, uh, what, what, what we can see is that we've already saved um, 2,000 uh, man days. So there's thing or there's this concept in robotic process automation, we call it man days. It's man and days. It's 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 not man hours, um, just just because robot doesn't have that particular concept of time, right? They can work twenty four hours, twenty four seven. Um, um, they can work, uh, say, nonstop. So we've already saved it, and this is um, by the way the hard savings. We've already saved two thousand man days. And that's almost equivalent to seven or, or, or say eight people 
um, in one particular, um, say, organization. So imagine saving um, 2,000 man hours. Imagine not hiring seven to eight people in one year. The, 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 the 2,000 man hours is, is just for one year. So, so, so imagine if you, can, if you can utilize the bot for, for say, five years or 10 years. Imagine saving 70 to 80 people in a span of seven to 10 years, right? So uh, that's, that's, that's one of the, the, the beauty of, of RPA. It lets you take out, um, or since, since, since it, it lets you take out the, the human person in, in, in the actual job or, or, or in the actual process, you can always put that person somewhere else where he or she can add more value into, and then uh, let the bot work on the the tasks that that um, the previous worker was 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 working um, on too, right? So of course, um, in terms of of your your um, return on investment you can feel or you, you, you would realize the impact of RPA within 12 months. So there's no technology yet out there that can do this. Um, since, since, uh, since RPA, um, well, development time of RPA could, could be you know, as, 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 uh, as short as three weeks to as long as two months, depending on the complexity of the process. So, so imagine deploying a bot um, uh, in three weeks' time or in two months' time and allowing that particular bot to work on some, some processes in your organization. So that's why in terms of ROI, uh, you, can, you can expect the impact of, of RPA um, within 12 months or, or in 12 months. So I hope I made my, myself clear on, on those particular metrics or on those particular figures. So right now, I know you're asking, um, how is RPA doing this? Yes, we know that it's a robot, um, but not a physical one, but it's a digital robot, right? Um, but how is RPA doing this? So I've mentioned a while ago that uh, majority of us, or in this particular webinar, are working in the service sector. Uh, we are working in the, the financial industry. We are working in, um, say, IT company, say, HR, and so on and so forth. And and to those who are uh, still studying, well, later on after you graduate, you 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 you'll find yourself working in one office, right? And the thing and the thing about you know working either in an office or in a manufacturing plant for that particular matter, you always have to deal with data. That's that's the curse of 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 um, of you know uh, uh, say employment. You have to work on data, right? You, um, either you do basic math, uh, either you 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 create a report, and so on and so forth. And what if I tell you that there's one uniform way on how we how we treat data? So basically, there's um, well, I can say that uh, say even if I don't know who you are or all all those um, people that are attending in this uh, particular webinar, I can say that we share one thing, and that is how we treat data. And this is how we treat data. We capture the data, either we get it from one email, we get it from um, last year's financial report, we get it from a text message, we get it from a Facebook messenger message, we get it from a message in LinkedIn, and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, before you start working on data, you have to capture it. You have to extract it somewhere, right? The next process step is that we modify, we rationalize, and normalize data. Meaning to say, we have to check the data if it's accurate, right? We have to check, uh, or we 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 have to clean the data. That's the more say accurate term. We have to clean the data. Are the formats correct? Um, in order for me to generate a report, I have to make sure that I get the data, and I try to to to, to modify the data in a way that it will be say understandable on my end so that I can process it in, in um, say after a minute or two. So um, uh, next is you validate the data. You make sure that the data is correct, right? So the thing about 
or the difference between modifying the data is you make sure that each and every data is um, in a particular way that you would be able to understand it since they, they, they come from a different source, right? So data validation is to make sure that, that, that the data that you have is accurate now. So now, now that you have your data and now, now that, that you, you've validated that it's accurate, now it's, it's time for you to process the data. I don't know how you do it. Uh, you can do it in, in, in spreadsheet, in, in say Excel, you do it in um, one application that your company has, one software that, 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 that your business has, and so on and so forth. I don't know how you do it, but the thing is you process the data. Each and every one of us processes data, right? So next is we reconcile. We ensure the accuracy of the data that was processed. We have to check if, hey, did I make the correct process in order for me to arrive at this raw report? So next is um, we submit the, the particular report um, um, to our boss, to our, say, colleague, um, or say to someone who's 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 next in line in terms of you know processing of all those data, this 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 um, uh, processes that 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 I'm sharing with you right now is a uniform way of how we are treating data. We capture data, we enrich them, we validate, we process, uh, we, we reconcile, and then uh, we analyze, and then so on and so forth. And these uh, six steps can be done by a robot. Robots can extract your data, can rationalize or modify the data, meaning to say you, it can make your data um, uh, readable in, in one particular uniform way. It validates the data, makes sure that it's correct. It processes data, reconciles, and creates a report for you. So it's an end-to-end -end process. So if ever I'm working on, if, if we have, say, um, finance people in this room, I know you can relate. Right? You get the data somewhere else, you create a report, and that's it. Bots can do that for you, for everyone, regardless of on um, which particular uh, say industry you are in right now or even in the future. So you might be asking, hey, Jay, um, you keep on asking or you keep on telling us, um, um, Yes, we can, we can apply robotics. We have to apply robotics. These are the benefits that we can get from robotics based on the figures that, that, that you presented. Um, now, perhaps you're asking yourselves and you're thinking to ask me, what are the processes right there or that we have that we can always see, automate? Uh, we, we have this concept we call uh, the RPA-ready processes. And um, this is where the, you know, the process assessment and process analysis will come in. This is actually the part where you know, Six Sigma can, can, can be utilized. So if you are going to read the statement at the bottom, it says there that in order to benefit from a rapid ROI, choose processes that pass through a transformation initiative using the Lean Six Sigma methodology. So um, that's... That's actually the best picture or the best case for, for a process um, where you can create a bot into. But it doesn't, of course, limit you to create a bot for those processes that you didn't apply Six Sigma into. So that's, you know, that's just to put a clarification on that one. So if, if, if you didn't do Six Sigma in a particular process, it doesn't mean that you can't automate or you cannot deploy a robot in that. This particular statement is just telling us that that's the ideal process in order for you to develop a bot. So why is that? So uh, let's try to um, uh, try to understand the, the, the visuals that you are seeing right now. So of course, all processes has to come or has to start with the starting point, right? Is your process highly manual or repetitive process? Um, we all have that work, um, or for those students out there, you will have that work wherein you have to do a particular task, either on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a, say on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, right? So say for example, on my end, um, I do uh, say, um, say timesheet. 
So timesheet is 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 what we do in in the firm or in the company for for recording purposes on whether um, I went on leave on a particular day or how I spent my entire eight hours in one particular um, week. Or I can always do timesheet on a daily basis. I can always do timesheet um, every time uh, or the day before the cutoff period. So that's 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 a repetitive and manual process for, for me. But I can always create a bot for me to do that. Right. So if it's repetitive, if it's manual, the answer is a robot. Next is is it rule based? All of or or majority of, of, of the, the process that, that we have uh, right now, I would say a rule-based. And this is where Six Sigma will come in. Six Sigma is strict when it comes to you know rule-based processes or a um, standardized process. A standardized process is a rule-based process. So if it's a rule-based, create a bot. Does it come uh, with a readable and electronic input types? When I say readable electronic types, does it come with, uh, say, from your email, um, say an Excel file, or, or say from your database from a particular website, uh, but not yet in the handwriting part? Okay. So, if 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 you want to process, um, um, or if you want your robots to process those inputs from from from, from handwritten documents, you need to. Um, uh, partner your RPA with artificial intelligence. That's where the artificial intelligence will come in so that it would understand that if it's a handwritten um, a document, it, it can still read. So uh, so if it's a um, um, JR Mandiogayon in a text file or, or in a readable electronic um, uh, document, the robot can, can easily read that. But if I write that in particular paper, the robot won't be able to read that. But artificial intelligence can. It can identify whether a letter J is a letter J and an A is an A and differentiate um, handwritten, uh, say, letters from, from, from other letters that you've written. So that's actually one 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 caveat on how or, or yeah one caveat on how we are using artificial intelligence together with robotic process automation standard input types um so yeah i've 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 mentioned about lean six sigma and how it's it's standardized processes the thing about process is that um if it's a broken process most likely it's not standardized when i say broken process um there are you know a couple of ways in in, in delivering the output. So um, it could be uh, say, or you can create, or you can deliver an output using the process X. You can deliver a, an output using the process Y and Z. And at the same time, arrive at say output A. The thing is that's not standardized. You have to have a standardized process um, uh, in order for your people or the people working on that particular process to be more efficient and more productive. That's where Lean Six Sigma comes in. So since majority of the processes that we have right now are broken processes, um, what we do as, as, as RPA professionals is, is uh, we standardize the process. We standardize, we standardize the input because these processes are the processes that your bots will follow. So, uh, Bots meaning to say there is one or just 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 a couple of ways um, in 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 delivering the task or delivering the output. So that's being standardized. Low or medium exception rate um, meaning to say uh, it doesn't require a lot of cognitive power. So if it's just mathematical accuracy, your robots can do that. It has a lot of computing power. But if 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 say um, um, more on the decision making that 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 would need your 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 brain power, your robot and your AI might not be able to you know um, uh, to capture that. Why? Because even if uh, robotic process automation and artificial intelligence right now are or say buzzwords, I would say in the century, um, uh, they're still they cannot they. they Still, they cannot um, 
um, uh, say outperform the thinking capacity of a human being. There's no technology out there that has the capacity. Thinking like a human being or even more than a human being. There's no artificial intelligence who thinks like, you know, uh, Jarvis, say Ultron, or, you know, uh, sino pa yun? Um, uh, the Terminator in Skynet. There's no technology that levels to those particular type of, 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 of say, machines. So artificial intelligence right now is, they say, and you, and you can look this up in Google, uh, they are as dumb as toddlers. So it's not yet that intelligent. So if it concerns a higher level of cognitive skills, it might not be ready for, or it might not be a candidate for, for RPA. So processing method can be changed. The thing is that uh, if you standardize the process, um, most likely it shouldn't change. But if say, for example, there's uh, there's another system coming in next month. Might as well park the RPA project and and continue the development of the bot once the, the that that new software say arrives. So high process volumes. This is actually another uh, another thing about RPA that's my favorite because the more um, or uh, the more voluminous the the the, the transactions are. Um, the more that we can benefit from it. So we have this particular client uh, that processes a thousand of invoices in one particular year. And one invoice, uh, bef when, before we, we deployed a bot, uh, takes 45 minutes to do. Why? Because it has a lot of coordination. It has a lot of, say, extracting of, of, of say, information from one source to another, one database to another. It has a lot of modifying and, and uh, normalizing data. So it takes 45 minutes for, for, for that particular business unit to create one invoice. When we deploy the bot, um, that 45 second, uh, that 40, that 45 minutes was turned into 45 seconds. So imagine the speed, um, and the more speedy the bot is, the more that it can take more voluminous transactions. The more transactions that you have, the more, um, uh, say time savings that 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 you can get. So uh, personally, I love um, transactions that reaches say a thousand or millions of transactions in one uh, one particular fiscal year because that's where the benefits the, uh, or that's where the most benefits that we can get um, from. So will minor automation improve the process? Of course, definitely it has to improve. But the thing is, you have to investigate uh, potential tactical solutions as well. Like what I've said a while ago, uh, not not all process concerns uh, can be answered by RPA. So RPA is not like a magic wand that uh, once you deploy, it's gonna solve everything. So you still have to, you know, um, search for 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 other tools and try to assess is this is this a better candidate for RPA. Um, deep system changes. This is about the the application that 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 you're using. Sometimes we have, um, or we do, say, um, um, a couple of, of of say updates in one application, right? I uh, I just got um, an update from uh, say iOS just 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 a couple of days back. So. If the system does not really re or will not experience a deep system changes, then then it can be RPA uh, candidate. But if it will require a deep system change, meaning to say it will change the interface, how it looks, where where the buttons will be, then you might want to park it first and try to wait for that uh, system changes uh, to be applied. So if you follow the orange path. Um, that's a perfect candidate for RPA. Uh, so more manual, I'll just try to highlight the most important things here. More manual, more repetitive, um, rule-based, um, uh, low, medium, uh, say exception rate, meaning to say it doesn't require a high level of, of, of cognitive thinking. Um, 
uh, high process volumes. Those are the things that you have to consider uh, or um, um, at the minimum when it comes to trying to create a bot for a particular process. So I hope this is clear. So yeah, um, so let's proceed to, to the next slide. So, uh, well, actually this one is not, is not uh, an RPA original thought, but I got this from Six Sigma. But the thing is, um, uh, this can also be realized by, by robotic process automation. The more accurate uh, the system is, or since since robots are more accurate, the lesser the error rates, like what I've mentioned a while ago, the lesser defects, the fewer defects, or defects could be zero. The thing is that if your defects is closer to zero or at zero, um, the 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 lesser or the more you can minimize the rework. And reworks are painful in you know in business operations. It causes stress. It causes money. Uh, you have to do overtime. Um, uh, you 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 tend to lose the work-life balance. So defects could also lead to a couple of delays, right? So th that's one thing. Um, overproduction. The thing about bots is that uh, it will only produce the amount of transactions that you need. It's not gonna overproduce. So we need to say um, it's 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 you know, it, it's trying to eliminate the waste of overproduction. So waiting time, the faster the well, well, bots are obviously faster that a human than than a human person. The lesser time that that you know um, you can have, the the more you can eliminate the waiting time. Like what I've shared a while ago uh, in the loans application process, um, from from. From, from 30 days down to 24 hours. So that's a shorter waiting time for me. So non-utilized talents, um, this, is, this is actually very interesting because say we have that experience when we are waiting for the output of our colleague because that particular output is our input. So we need to wait for his or her report in order for us to start our own report, right? Or, or or our own task. The thing about bots is that since it has lesser defects, um, zero waiting time or almost zero waiting time, um, the the the, the, the non-utilization of talents is 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 minimized. And of course, transport uh, transportation. Your since bots are well, bots are not. They're not going to walk or you know ride ride Uber or. Or grab. Uh, the thing is here is because um, bots can work systems and systems, right? Uh, um, you can always put the bot virtual, meaning to say you can put your robots in the cloud. And we have, well, majority of our bots in the office are all in the cloud. So meaning to say, I don't have to be in the office to command my bot to execute a particular process. I just have to use my phone. So, 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 so say I just woke up, right? And I need to go to the office to you know, transact or uh, finish a particular, uh, say, report or a particular document. I don't need to be there physically. All I need to do is, um, is get my phone and, and send a command to my bot that, hey, bot, or, or bot A, run this particular process for me. So and, and then that's it. So if you are stuck in traffic, um, um, you are having your breakfast somewhere, uh, you are on a date perhaps, just 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 send a command to your bot using your phone, and and everything else is in the cloud. So we have that thing called virtual uh, robots. We're in. There's no physical uh, bots, but the bot is in the cloud. So that's that's interesting. Right? So of course, um, eliminates uh, waste in inventory because like what I've said a while ago, bots will not stop finishing all the transactions. So if you set the bot to, hey, bot A, because you can have um, hundreds of bots, right? So for example, my 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 bot's name for, for process A is bot A. So hey, bot A, finish this transaction. It's not gonna stop until it finishes everything. So if it has to process a million or a thousand 
um, uh, say invoices, it will process and uh, finish those invoices. So it could be, you know, within um, one week or or two weeks. We don't know. It depends on how 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 long each transaction uh, takes, right? So, but the thing is, your bots will work twenty four seven, um, uh, three hundred sixty five days, if you would allow it to, or if you would tell it to do so. The thing about having your bots in the cloud is that um, they, they, they don't require to you know, shut down. They don't require to be restarted. It's just there in the cloud. So um, say motion, um, one of the, the interesting thing about motion is, is remember that, that, that uh, one business unit that we created a bot or deployed a bot in creating invoices too. The invoices should be, should be printed, right? So, 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 so the bot has to uh, do the, you know, the processing of data in one particular software, and then it will automatically print the invoice. So uh, no more going to the printer, you know, um, you know, trying to configure the printer in a, uh, and saying, hey, print this particular file. No, the bot will finish everything or will do the transaction um, processing data, and then it will just, um, um, what do you call this? Uh, send a command to to your printer to print that particular document. So no more a lot of movements, a lot of motions. Of course, no more extra processing. Um, basically, it, it it covers as well uh, the overproduction and the defects and so on and so forth. So we call this downtime. So um, bots eliminate, if not minimizes or reduce downtime. So downtime is the acronym of all these uh, wastes that I've mentioned. So moving on, um, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Don't, uh, you can just write it or you can just write them down right now. I will try to answer them one by one later on. So, so some benefits of RPA uh, since, since we are getting you know, more excited about how RPA can really benefit um, um, the organization that we are into and even to the, you know, to the personal level. So here are some of the benefits of RPA. Uh, first is, of course, increase in operational efficiency. And we've been saying this repeatedly for almost 30 minutes, I guess. It reduces manual touch points to drive operational excellence and lower labor cost. The more efficient, of course, the, the, the process is, um, you don't have to pay for overtimes. You don't have to pay for breaks because right now uh, we all know that 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 say uh, your 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 morning breaks and your lunch breaks these are both paid right uh, say 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 you have 50 minutes of break in the afternoon and, and another 50 minutes at uh, say say in the um, p.m. so um, no more um, no more paid breaks, no more paid over breaks, no more paid overtimes because your bot can work 24 seven. Employee and client experience, like what I've said, this is actually my favorite because the more efficient we are in our processes, um, the more bots that we can have um, um, or deployed in, in the company that you are working into, uh, the more time that you can spend um, creating value in the work that you're in. So the more time that you can, you know, um, focus or developing your 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 team, the more time that 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 you can devote on, say, trying to understand your colleague. The more time that you can devote on trying to learn new skills. The more time that you can devote on, say, strategic planning or data analytics. That means the more value that you can add to your organization. So we have this. Um, a particular concept in the realm of, of robotic process automation that it enables human skills. When I, when I say human skills, these are um, creativity, your understanding, uh, uh, say empathy. These are high value, um, high value skills of, of, of a human person that bots cannot replicate. So the more, the more that you can develop a team or the more that you can make your team work, um, 
actually the, the more valuable you can be in the organization because it's it's a particular skill that not everyone has right so employee experience can be improved because like what i said a while ago the more that you can deliver value and as human persons you don't want to be stuck in your office doing you know repetitive and manual and boring tasks most of the employees right now or most of the jobs uh, or like what like what you've said a while ago 45 to 60 percent of the jobs that we are working on or we are doing it makes us feel like we are robots right it makes us feel that um uh these are mechanical tasks there's a there there's this uh truth in 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 one statement that says that if you think you are working on a job that makes you feel like you are a robot might as well create a robot or deploy a robot for that so that you can focus on the human skills that bots can do you know your your creativity your 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 um your um uh say analytical thinking so these are the things that 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 bots can do yet so strength and governance you know um this is actually one thing that we are um uh say applying in the firm because we have the 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 data privacy act right right now we have the um data privacy officer of the firm so i mean it's 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 a c-suite level we're, we're in that uh uh the office of the data privacy of um uh chief uh uh the main focus is to se secure the data that you know um the organization has so the more exposed your data to human beings the more possibility or the higher possibility that you know um uh uh that there will be a data breach right so so one one particular solution is might as well use a bot to access those information um instead of a human person trying to access an information so we have this just just you know the start of covid 19 um we have this rpa project we're in we have to get all the data of of, of each individual in our um in the firm right so we are about uh, 2000 workers so we have to get you know the the if he or she has a flu like symptoms you know uh say uh those health surveys with personal details um age cell phone number um their address and so on and so forth these are personal data that 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 we need to secure so we, so if ever we need to pull out a particular data we 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 take away the person and, and we just created a bot for that so the data is not exposed to a human person so that's something about strengthening um data governance of course fostering innovation uh, another thing wherein we can enhance employee um uh, or we can improve the uh say the employee experience is to foster innovation the more that your time can be freed up from those mechanical tasks the more that you can be creative the more that you can think of ways on how you can improve more um uh, either within the team or in the entire organization the more that you can solve more problems more problems that that the rpa can solve at the moment or other tools that your company has um that cannot solve uh, uh or cannot be utilized at the moment so meaning to say the more um valuable you become in your organization and definitely all of these they empower workforce they make um, human workforce more productive and focus on value added tasks so um so rpa as you can see is not just about technology it's not just about revenue it's not just about saving costs it's not just about productivity efficiency and so on and so forth but it also boils down to the personal level um it's not a it's not a tool wherein businesses can or uh is limited to businesses only but but it it's a tool that even at the individual level or even at the personal level of the employee he or she can benefit from so the more bots that you can have or the more bots that you can deploy in your organization the more empowered you become the more valuable you become the more uh, significant you become you know as as 
as individuals or as as human beings one thing that we search for for in our work is purpose right we always ask ourselves why am i here ano bang ginagawa ko dito bakit ko ba to ginagawa ganito ganyan 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 the thing about rpa is if there's an rpa for that the more you can find or the closer that that you can uh, be in finding out what your purpose is um, you can develop more skills you can you can say uh, study uh, say data analytics in the future you can study uh, say blockchain or all those technology that that we know we can impact um, the organization or the, the 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 different sectors that we have right now and one thing that we lack as of the moment are the skills that can harness or can utilize those technologies that I've mentioned, you know, blockchain, data analytics, artificial intelligence. The more robust that, that you have, the more time you can figure out what you really like. Do you, do you want to focus on artificial intelligence on blockchain? Or do you want to focus on design thinking? Or do you want to focus on, say, problems that RPA can solve, say, focus on Six Sigma? So it enables workforce and RPA boils down even at the personal level. So, you know, um, I've mentioned about um, um, uh, robotic process automation is changing the entire workforce industry or the, the, the entire workforce. On the left-hand side, you can see this is the current state of the workforce. There are a lot of, of, of people or the head count of people um, at the bottom of this triangle or, or you know it dwarfs all of the or it dwarfs the number of, of, of the number from those um, um, people working on the mid and top part of the pyramid so this this is your organization at the bottom part you have your staff you have your say supervisor so basically these are your uh, level one or level two employees uh, they do the the, the the transactional work on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. So basically, this is the base of the organization, right? These are your staff. On the second level or the mid level of the triangle, you have your managers. These are people who are working on the reporting and compliance. And on the top level, you have your executives, those people who are doing the decision making for the organization. They they harness, you know, um, say data from 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 the entire organization. And decide um, um, using that data. The thing about this is, there's only a small percentage of people, you know, thinking um, what the business will be like, you know, one year or ten years from now, or what will be the decision or what will be the strategy. You could say um, at least ten to twenty people thinking for the entire organization. So if you are an organization, say if you are 500, uh, you can assume that there are less than 50 people who are deciding for for the fate of that particular organization and this is the current state and this is very uh very gloomy as you can see because how come you know 50 people for example can decide on the fate of the organization that that is composed of of, of say 500 now you go on the right hand side this is the future of workforce um, as, you, as you can observe, it's now inverted. Um, still, the transactional process is still at the bottom. But the thing is, there will be a fewer, significantly uh, fewer number of people at this level because what you will have are bots, what you will have are robots, technologies that that can assist your 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 human workers uh, in terms of um, uh, processing all those transactions, all those repetitive, manual, all those say voluminous transactions, right? In reporting and compliance, you still have your bots. I've mentioned about um, um, complying to data privacy. But what's more important, it's what's happening in insight and analytics. As you can see, the more people uh, uh, will be uh, in this particular um, part of the, the organization. Why is that? Because an organization, once you deploy the bots, you can always harness the, your your people's skills and other talents and, and, and it, you know, uh, human skills that, that 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 I've mentioned a while ago. The more brain power you can have, um, who will decide for the future of the organization. More brain power means you can have uh, more sound judgment or more sound decision or strategy uh, that that you are going to apply in the near future. And this is the future of the organization. Lesser or fewer people at the bottom, 
lesser or fewer people doing the transactional work and more people doing data analytics, more people doing the decision making, strategic thinking. Um, you'll have um, design thinking and so on and so forth. Those things that that would require a higher human cognitive uh, skills. So um, uh, I just showed you a glimpse of the future um, and there's no stopping uh, robotic process automation and artificial intelligence in achieving this particular state of our workforce right now. So um, I think that's it for, for, for a short and I hope very informative um, session on getting to, getting to know what RPA is. So Felix? Hi, Jay. Yeah. Ayan. Teka lang, masin ba ako? Ayun, di pa ko na yung sarili ko. So, thank you for that. Yeah, it's a very informative talk. Yan, para may ilaw. Yan. And I think, <laughs> talagang uh, their hook dun sa, sa ano mo, sa sa talk mo. Kasi, ako actually, ngayon lang ako nakakompleto ng, <laughs> ng talk. Kasi, I'm very interested too. Kasi, most oh, thank of the time, you. Uh, I, I go away from the keyboard kasi may mga ginagawa akong errands. But, <laughs> nag nag note din ako when doon sa mga sinasabi mo and the slides yung yung slide ang ganda niya uh, i think mukhang may hihingi ng copy ng slide nararamdaman ko na kasi mga kakilala ako diyan na nag-aabang ng ano eh pwede po bang humingi ng copy so yun so thank you no congratulations for that uh, very informative talk mo about RPA my pleasure yan ayan ang sige nag-aano na nag-start na yung question so uh, mukhang gigil sila sa clarify ng mga thoughts nila no so this sure, is sure. just surface no sabi nga ni, ni Jay kanina this is just surface and you, you've seen ano yung mga benefits so i think marami sila ng questions on how to you know um mm -hmm. get this benefits papunta dun sa organizations nila so let's start the Q&A right. John nandiyan ka ba um sa YouTube ka kukuha ah, yes yes i'm here i'm here na ah, sige start na tayo ng Q&A no um i think this was uh discuss a bit kanina uh mm -hmm. this is from june oliver karaan sabi niya sir is it bad if you let the robot work continuously without letting it to have a maintenance check well um like whatever yung yung kanina about the the if if, if we can go back to this particular uh slide if if nothing or if there will be no changes in the application where the robot is working on you don't need uh, a particular maintenance mm -hmm. so that's that's actually a good thing about having uh, a digital workforce or a software mm -hmm. robot it's not like a physical robot na kailangan mong i-check from time to time you know kailangan mo lagyan ng grease and check the wirings and so on and so forth mm -hmm. this is this is a digital robot that we are talking about it's in the cloud so um in terms of maintenance you don't have to do that as long as so there's always a caveat as long as the robot is properly designed to do what it is supposed to do mm -hmm. okay tama so yun yung advantage kasi nga digital naman siya no yeah. unlike kapag yung yung sa usual natin nakikita that they were physical so may mga friction wear and tear etc yeah uh, um Sige, thank you for that uh, answer. I, I hope na nasagot ni Jay yung tanong mo, uh, June, no? Uh, jo, how about sa YouTube? Ayan, ito uh, from, uh, ano, from, actually it was discussed already, no? a question from uh, Ms. Jay, ano? So, does RPA require coding? If so, what software or programming languages should we learn? Or what are your recommended languages for the RPA? Yeah, um, yes, it requires... Um, at least, siguro, uh, an average level of programming skills. Um, in terms of the leading RPA technologies or RPA tools out there, you have UiPath, you have Blue Prism, mm -hmm. you have Automation Anywhere, and you have Work Fusion. These are the top four RPA tools or top four RPA companies that are dominating the, the, the RPA industry. In terms of the programming languages, you can use uh, C++ and VB.NET. Mm -hmm. Okay, or the core Java. Actually, commonly, yeah. Uh, yeah, the the most applications right now are are Java. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so actually, um, uh, I didn't take uh, VB.NET 
in uh, C++ or, or other C languages. But the thing is, if you have um, a knowledge in programming, uh, it's easier for you to adopt to mm. other languages. Yeah. You just follow the syntax. Diba? Right, syntax right. Lang and then you just uh, code in the libraries and then you're good to go. Yes, correct. So another question po from Sir Ryle. So good evening, sir. Can you state some of your RPA works that is successful and still operating right now? So how did it change the company oh, yeah. of the, or the establishment? So um, if you are in the finance sector or medyo mas exposed ka doon sa finance side of the business, um, it's uh, noong 30, noong June 30 was the end of the fiscal year or the tax season, right? So we created a bot uh, to file tax um, uh, using your EBIR and EFPS uh, softwares. So um, at a total of 400, uh, say, companies, um, uh, we were able to submit their 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 um, tax returns using robots. So no more navigating um, and no more manual and yet online uh, navigating through EBIR and EFPS. So that's actually the most recent. Um, well, not re- not really the most recent because we've already developed that a month. Uh, not as um, um, as early as January because you know uh, there are companies uh, or or um, say BIR uh, re- requires some companies to to file for their tax on a monthly basis. So yeah, it's it's one of the successful things. Um, another thing is the generation of pay slips. So uh, it never failed. We actually have bots that 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 we we call uh, champions. We're in. They never fail to you know deliver the task and deliver the output at the time um, um, uh, human users will need it. So we have those champions. We have we have bots. Uh, um, Continuously working uh, for four days, 24-7. Mm-hmm. Grabe, walang pahinga yung bots. Yan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sige, may question dito. Uh, this is a common question coming from Karen Galicia and Maureen Nasses. Uh, what are the limitations of using RPA? Yeah, um, like what I've mentioned a while ago, if, if a process is broken... Mm-hmm. You can expect that a robot uh, will 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 create a bad output. It's like mm-hmm. you know, garbage in garbage, garbage out. Garbage in garbage yeah. out. Yeah. So so yeah. Remember, since it's a robot, you have to configure it the way that it's supposed uh, to work. Mm-hmm. Kung ano yung kung ano yung um, modify natin sa robot, or kung paano natin design yung robot to create a particular output it will follow that particular process on how to create a uh, say the output that we are asking it to 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 create kapag mali yung proseso niya or mali yung output niya regardless kung gaano kabilis gaano ka ka accurate uh, yung 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 robot it will mm-hmm. deliver um, a bad output mm-hmm. so it's one of the limitation it's the process that's why we always have to standardize the process muna because like like what I've said again, um, bots don't have that cognitive skills na pwede niya sabihin na, oh, mali na pala yung ginagawa ko. Mm-hmm. Or tama pa yung ginagawa ko. Yes, it will yes. have that thought na laging tama yung ginagawa ko kasi ito yung pinogram sa akin na gawin ko. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, Just like yeah. our certificates, no, sir? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, uh, when we are, sorry, share ko lang. When we are uh, launching our certificates for, for thousands of participants. Automated kasi siya. So from yeah, a yeah. form, extract mo and then uh, i-deploy mo into the PDF and then i-send mo siya sa, <laughs> sa email. Now, uh, people yeah. are complaining, bakit daw ganun yung uh, wala rin sila apelido or whatever. Uh, it's hard to explain na, sir, kasi po, ito po yung in-input nyo doon sa, sa form. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, ayun yung so, common challenge talaga ng, ano, eh, ng RPA. Yeah. No, kapag uh, ano yung in-input mo, ayun din talaga yung lalabas kasi right. you don't know how to decide what's wrong or what's right. Right, right. 
Okay. okay may mga questions pa dito sir uh, from ano? Sige. From sir uh, from Miss Arian Magalo okay. Magalona. Hi po. Since RPA works on software and it uses yeah. cloud, uh, do we need to familiarize with the cloud infrastructures or the uh, infrastructure libraries? No, well, not really. You can just ask your, your your IT department to do that for you. All you have to do is, you know, as a as Samin can say, what what we do as an RPA center of excellence is we analyze processes, we develop bots, and then we deploy the bots, and then we ensure that the bot is is doing the right thing. Meaning to say, it, it has mm -hmm. metrics that we are going to use for say say evaluation. Because the bots are considered. Uh, your digital workforce. So, so, so meaning to say they have to have their key performance indicators. Now, on the tech side or, or, or on how are you going to put the bot in the cloud, just leave that to the manager or to, the, to, to, your, to your IT team because they're, they might have some concerns in terms of network security. Mm -hmm. So you don't want your bot to be compromised. So just leave it to the network specialists. Remember, we are RPA Center of Excellence. We create the bot, we develop the bot, we ensure that, that the bot is, is, is working the way it was designed. But, you know, um, the, the cloud architecture should be left with the IT department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ito, magandang question to coming from Briggs Bartolome. Do you think there is an industry where in robotics doesn't take the place of human force? Um... Of course, there is. Say, uh, you manual labor. You mm. can't. The, you, you can't put a construction for that. Let's say. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, uh, possible naman siya, pero parang sobrang baka matagal pa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, right now, halimbawa, yung delivery, diba? You still need a human person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we don't have uh, a very reliable yet na na self-driving vehicle with the the highest technology in terms of artificial intelligence as of the moment. Mm -hmm. So na yung natin na kahit yung 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 Tesla uh, na um, self-driving vehicle sometimes um, it meets a particular accident. So yeah. So um, there might there could be uh, just to answer the question yung mga super super labor uh, intensive labor intensive mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. repetitive Agreed. yeah. Ito sir, ano, personal question. No? So, um, do you think uh, automating something is uh, ethical? For example, yeah. uh, in a very manual uh, work. The thing about robots. No? So, you automate a manual work wherein you are paid, for example, eight hours. And then you automated a process that can do it in two hours a day. So, therefore, you already have the, the free six hours. Now, so the question would be, uh, is it ethical, sir, uh, to automate something? Yeah, well, um, the the best answer that I can I can give you is that technology is neither ethical or unethical. It's the motive of the human person. So if your if 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 your motive is to escape your eight hour job, kasi na automate mo nang iba and tell your boss na hey, um, uh, nagawa ka siya for eight hours and you are being paid for eight hours by the way. And 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 the reality is that uh, you you automated some parts of it. Then that that's where the the not very ethical thing comes in. So it 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 all boils down uh, to the motive of the person who's who's sending the command or you know trying to automate the the process. Thank you, sir. No, chaga sa policy din ng company more likely, di ba? Parang Yeah. Are they paid with the output or are they paid with the with the hours? Right. So because I believe all the opportunity ng ano yung RPA in the Philippines. Yeah, actually, like sinabi mo kanina, eight hundred thousand of BPO workers could be impacted by by RPA, and you can Google this 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 particular um, prediction, or I say, uh, yeah, um, predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so medyo madami pa tayong questions but it's getting late already. It's 8.30 and we should, you know, pack up. Yung iba kasi more of uh, manufacturing, um, parang tinatanong nila, uh, do, do you have any known benefits of RPA in the manufacturing? Well, in the manufacturing, uh, in any type of industry, 
uh, applicable si RPA. In Ayan, any may, kind of industry, uh, may tanong din kasi dito um, na data, yeah. saan field daw ng uh, saan daw field suitable si RPA. So siguro magkakat across na yun dun sa ano mo. Yeah. So um, as long as you are dealing with data, as long as you are dealing with, you know, papers, as long as you are dealing with softwares, as long as you are working in a computer, um, RPA is applicable. Mm. So i- i- na- hindi lang siguro buo, let's say pa- parang from um, hindi, hindi lahat pwedeng end-to-end. I mean, yeah, yeah, from, well, kunwari, that, for, for yeah. our case, pwede siguro. I mean, from the registration, tapos baka yeah. sooner or later, uh, ano, AI na yung, RPA AI na yung, ano, yung nagtuturo. Hindi natin alam, yeah. di ba? Pari <laughs> lang, nandun kami, pero picture lang pala na ina-animate yung, ano. So, pwede, pero yun yan, uh, there are, uh, sa lahat naman ng bagay, meron siyang, Right. meron siyang uh, very specific applications na hindi kumbaga exemption diba in every rule there, there yeah. are exemptions and i think that's that's going to be applicable even for RPAs sige and, um and you yes know, just 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 to add lang so for example you have you have 10 process steps uh in one work or in one task not all the time mm-hmm. that we can automate yung uh, first step up hanggang hanggang 10 step we mm-hmm. can always say automate you know from 1 to 5th or 6 to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it really depends on the complexity of yeah, the process. Agree. Sometimes kasi it has or somewhere in the middle kailangan ng ano eh ng ng, ng human ng, intervention talaga. Mm-hmm. Human intervention or decision Cognitive, making. Yes, ano. decision making. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Na hindi siya attribute na yes no lang na kaya ng gawin ni yeah, computer. Right. Eh. Yeah. Yes no or freak out ganun. <laughs> Anyway, so ang ganda ng usapan, uh, sayang lang wala tayong time. Pero I think um uh yung ibang questions naman uh, kagaya ng lagi natin sinasabi, you can still connect with Jay sa LinkedIn like what I right. did kaya siya nang punta dito. So Jay, invite them to connect with your social media accounts para ma-follow ka na yeah. and, uh, um uh, and yes, uh just just I'm I'm always available in LinkedIn as long as <laughs> yes. we're going to talk about, you know, robotic process automation and artificial intelligence or technology in general. Uh, that's actually like a, it, it has a soft spot um, within me. So just 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 connect, uh, send me a message, and I will definitely try to respond um, in the quickest possible time. Um, I also have a podcast. Um, I talk about you know modern technologies. Uh, so definitely, I talk about robotic process automation, artificial intelligence, and sooner uh, I'm I'm gonna be talking about blockchain. So just look for yeah just just look for um um the podcast entitled the automatable um it's available yeah automatable okay it's available in spotify in in apple podcast in in google podcast and in iHeartRadio. so uh you will learn about the business applications um you know uh on well of these technologies in that particular podcast so nice. if, but if if you want a more specific answer to your narrow down questions or uh specialized question or yeah specialized concern just send me a message in my linkedin and i will definitely respond yeah jay's just like me and jojo always Awake. online <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> online and uh, by the yeah. way uh jay will be also the the program champion of uh, our online robotic process optimization masterclass and um yeah. this will be happening soon i think july 25th so uh the, the, for the details i think jojo prepared something for some few announcements before uh the conclusion of this session but uh Nonetheless, uh, thank you very much, Jay, for joining us tonight. Yes, and, thank you very uh, much, Jay. Uh, and uh, please follow Jay's social media accounts and yung yung mga yung podcast niya. Hindi ko alam na may podcast ka, so I'll be checking that out. Uh, yes, level let us ka kasi malam ng podcast ko. So okay, sige. Tignan natin yan para ma-share din natin sa ating page, no? So that's automatable, no? Tama ba? Yes. Ayan, automatable. So, so, Yeah. So thank you, thank you. So for thank you, Felix, uh, and yeah, thank for, you, Askflex, yeah. Academy, and everyone. Yeah. In. So thank you, thank you again, Jay. So talk talk to you soon uh, later, and then yeah. uh, Jojo will be uh, doing some announcements. So exit na muna kami. Sige, bye. Bye bye.
Ayan, so good evening. So for announcement, maraming salamat po uh, Sir Jay for that wonderful talk. So uh, please ka, uh, fill out the attendance form in the link, only those with Zoom and attendance details will be given a certificate. No? So, and so kindly don't forget to like our Facebook page. So we'll be having a, a program here wherein kapag na-reach natin ang 30,000 mark, okay? 30,000 mark of likes will be giving another batch of Lean Six Sigma White Belt for free. For free. So guys, help us out to reach 30,000 uh, likes and subscribers for our Facebook page para magkaroon tayo ng wave number three, okay? Next is, can we subscribe to our YouTube channel? Ayan, no? So we're growing in our uh, YouTube platform. So can we subscribe to our YouTube channel for our uh, live and uh, uh, updates for our training, okay? Next. Ayan, so announcement. Uh, ayan, so... As of now, medyo fully booked na ang ating Yellow Bell program. So, we'll be announcing soon. Uh, ano, kailan ba ulit yung next batch ng ating Yellow Bell? However, to uh, to promote, no, our Yellow Bell program is uh, has 16 hours of coursework, exercises, and quizzes, and uh, combinations of live classes as well. So, ito ay merong ano, heart-to-heart uh, project consultation with Sir Lex and, and the Alpha team. Okay, so, ayan. Next is, ayan, last six slots. Ayan, last six slots na lang for our green belt, the online green belt. So, this will take place on July 11 to August 9, every Saturdays and Sundays from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. No? So, this is composed of 40 hours coursework, exercises, quizzes, live classes, games, unlimited project coaching hours. Ito yung maganda eh, unlimited no? uh, coaching hours and actual project and for your certification exam. So, if you wish to have a yellow belt, then pursue a green belt. I suggest you go directly to green belt because after finishing the course, okay, you'll be having a, a yellow belt certificate also. Okay, so, yung yellow belt certificate na yun ay uh, given na rin, no? Pag natapos mo yung green belt. So, you'll have two certificates after you finish your, your GB. Next, our wave two ng ating very, very first uh, Certified Data Analyst Program. No? So, batapos na yung Wave 1. We're in dito tuturuan kayo the basics for the data management, data visualization, data statistics, operational analytics. So, yung mga nagtatanong ng forecasting in data science, yan, dito nyo matutunan yan. So, we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be learning about the a priori algorithms and automation on, in terms of data handling big data, so case study, exams. So we are going to use our language here for our uh, cert, uh, very, very first Certified Data Analyst Program. And then, ito na, yung robotic process automation. No? So this will happen on July 25, 26, August 1 and 8 from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. No? So kindly watch out. So, ayan. so this will be headed by Sir Jay also. And another last six slots for our coaching and mentoring fundamentals. So I highly suggest this one, no, for those who aspire to become manager or currently in man in the uh, managerial aspects. Okay, so managerial field right now. So this will be a very good uh, training for you, no. So it's a master class with Coach Ryan. And I uh and so kindly uh. Register, no? Meron tayong uh, two-day international conference, no? From July 11 to July 12, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. So this is in partnership and co-presented by uh, Asplex PH, Pinoy IES, and Ingeniero.org. So this is in partnership with Batangi Society of IE Students. So this is a uh, international conference for a cause. Okay, so the registration fee is from 100 to 500 pesos. Okay. And then the the covered topics would be um, future jobs for IEs, health and safety, IE in the pandemic. So guys, bigatin ang mga uh, bigatin ang mga ano nito, ang mga uh, speakers nito, no? So kindly watch out. Next, eto na, ayan. So remember the registration. So ayan. Uh, 
it is in our uh, page also kindly access the uh, Facebook page this IEX Alpha so to to have more details ayan next ayan to na pinakahihintay niyo guys oh so kindly uh, go to this link so kapag nag-error yung link uh, refresh niyo lang at maghintay guys no so, the influx of people going to our website will cause error so wait lang yan hindi ko na ginawa 1 hour Ayan, two hours na, okay? So, pakipail out correctly. Yung middle initial is not equal to the middle name, okay? So, kindly put your middle initial. Ayan, dyan ako nahihirapan maglinis ng data, no? And enter the correct email address, guys. The email address, not your home address. So, as, uh, as, as we wish na gawin niya, no? Ayan, so, here's the link for your... Uh, for your uh, evaluation form. So, ayun lang po. Maraming maraming salamat for tuning in to Ask Next PH Academy TV. No, So, together, we will be significantly, uh, let's continue to be hashtag significantly better together. So, ayun lang po. Maraming salamat. Bye!